Today we're going back to 1966. Filmed by an Italian crew in Spanish locations, this movie is considered by many to be the greatest western ever made. It's also the ninth highest rated film of all time on IMDb. Here are six screenwriting secrets in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Character orchestration is important because it allows each character to be unique and pop off the page. If all your characters are similar, it's hard for the audience to keep track of who's who. These differences in character also help to naturally create conflict in the story. In The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, notice how character orchestration is even baked into the movie's title. This is Tuco's introduction. This sets the tone for his interactions throughout the whole story. Of the three main characters, he also has the most colorful language. Bastard! Who the hell is that? One bastard goes in, another comes out. You're the son of a thousand fathers, all bastards like you. He's tall, blonde, he smokes his cigar, and he's a pig. Now make sure the rope is tight. It's got to hold the weight of a pig. When I saw you, I said to myself, Look at that big angel eyes. There are two kinds of people in the world, my friend. Those with a rope around their neck and the people who have the job of doing the cutting. There are two kinds of spurs, my friend. Those are coming by the door. Those are coming by the window. He's also illiterate. See you soon. He, he, he. Idiots. Hmm? It's for you. Un un There's no name on it. And despite being a rough outlaw, he's always doing this. <laughs> now let's take a look at Angel Eyes. In his introductory scene, we see that he has no problem with killing. and he'll do whatever he needs to get what he wants. Where is he? That's enough! I don't know where he is. How's your digestion now? You'd better I, talk. I have nothing to tell you. And finally, we have Blondie. We're immediately introduced to his tremendous skill. We also see that he has no problem betraying his partners. What do you mean? I mean our partnership is untied. Oh no, not you. You remain tied. I'll keep the money and you can have the rope. And yet, we also see that there's a good side to him. War for you. For... <clears throat> War for me. <laughs> Think of your story like a good symphony, using different instruments that sound unique and yet come together to create beautiful music. Westerns are a fantastic example of using subtext and dialogue. Characters never blatantly say, I'm going to kill you. Let's take a look at some great examples of subtext in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. That's your family? Yes. <laughs> nice family. Well, you don't have to worry. You'll never say anything to anybody again. Oh, yeah. yeah. We cut down my percentage. Liable to interfere with my aim. International cuisine. Healthful and nutritious food. Mmm, corn cobs. Dixie style. Our government has spared no expense. Huh? Sleep better. 
knowing my good friend is by my side to protect me. Now suppose you say present, Carson. I like big fat men like you. When they fall, they make more noise. And sometimes they never get up. But as long as I'm commandant, I won't permit any such trickery. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Just as long as you're the commandant. If your friends stay out in the damp, they're liable to catch a cold, aren't they? Or a bullet. Six. Perfect number. Isn't three the perfect number? Yeah. I got six more bullets in my gun. Doctor. Help me live a little more. Expect good news. Subtext is another way of involving the audience to help tell your story. Let them figure out the meaning hidden in the character's words. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly presents us with something different than the typical Western. Tuco, Blondie, and Angel Eyes navigate the story with an interesting backdrop, the American Civil War. Besides adding a rich texture to the plot, this story world directly affects the characters. For example, we get steady antagonism from the environment. He's on the other side of the river. But while the Confederates are there, we can't get across. As the characters pursue their objective of finding the gold, they're constantly reminded that human life is expendable during this war. You see, as soon as these cowards here are blue shirts around, they run. These rebels have no will to fight. Poor things. They'll soon be finished. Those men aren't worried about anything anymore, are they? I bet they didn't even pay you a penny for your arm. You're a lot luckier than that one there. Ready? Ready? Never seen so many men wasted so badly. And finally, this causes the characters to show us some humanity through their compassion for their fellow men. You'd better hope you never end up in. Keep it, it's yours. You can sure consider yourself much luckier than your pal. Wallace will punch your friend as long as the song goes. <laughs> When they say that the location can serve as its own character, the good, the bad, and the ugly is a good example of what they mean. The story world should affect your protagonist's and antagonist's decisions, just like any other important character. Reversals are delicious, unexpected surprises that keep an audience on their toes. In order for a good reversal to work, we need to establish a strong expectation of a likely outcome. In other words, make the audience think they know what will happen. So when the reversal occurs, it's a different outcome than what was expected. Westerns are great examples of using reversals to keep the story interesting. Let's take a look at some examples in The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. 
Are you? Is that you, Bill? Bill? Who are you? Go on talking about Bill Carson. So the lesson here, the audience is smart. Don't let your story play out exactly the way they think it will. Keep your screenplay interesting with unexpected reversals. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, once again we're talking about dramatic irony, which is what occurs when the audience knows something that certain characters do not. This can create the effect of suspense, as the audience wants to know what will happen when the characters discover the truth. For example, Tuco's gunmen silently stalk Blondie in his room. He doesn't know they're coming. But then a second layer of dramatic irony occurs when we see that now Blondie knows someone is in the hallway. This happens with Tuco as well, when he's more concerned with drawing himself a bath. Another example, Tuco discovers the infamous Jackson, aka Bill Carson. We know that this is the MacGuffin that Angel Eyes is hunting, so the audience starts to look ahead to the inevitable conflict between Angel Eyes and Tuco. Another common use of dramatic irony is for comedic effect. Here we know that the only reason Tuco wants Blondie alive is to discover the location of the gold. He should regain his strength in a very short time. Thank you, Father, thank you. You don't know what this boy's life means to me. Thanks be to Jesus, thanks to all of you. Here we know that Tuco and Blondie are only using the stretcher to carry dynamite. So it's funny when we see them pretend to be helping the wounded. There's a third effect of dramatic irony that I've discovered in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. It can also create a sense of pity. Here, we know that Tuco and his brother had a falling out. Blondie knows this as well. So we feel pity for Tuco as he says this. Yeah, yeah, my brother, he say to me, stay brother, don't go home. We never see each other. My brother is crazy about me. <laughs> I know I've covered this many times in other videos, but it's simply because dramatic irony is one of the most powerful yet simple tools you can put in your writing toolbox. There's an infamous phrase in screenwriting, show, don't tell. This is only part of the larger skill of involving the audience and letting them participate in telling the story. As Andrew Stanton famously said, Make the audience put things together. Don't give them four, give them two plus two. Editors and screenwriters have known this all along. It's the invisible application that holds our attention to story. Let's see the brilliant examples of involving the audience in the good, the bad, and the ugly. In this example, notice how we hear Tuco's full name on two occasions. We sentence the accused here before us, Tuco Benedicto Pacifico Juan Maria Ramirez. Tuco Benedicto Pacifico Juan Maria Ramirez. So when Tuco says this, 
Where's Padre Ramirez? Padre Ramirez. He's away at the moment. We know he might be asking about a possible relation. Notice they don't have him say, Hey, is Pablo Ramirez here? He's my brother. Another example, Tuco hunts Blondie in the desert. What exactly is he doing here? They let the audience figure it out. Another example. What's this all about? Sit down. Eat. <laughs> it's left to the audience to figure out that Tuco fears the food is poisoned. And finally, we have the crucial storyline of the cash box the MacGuffin of the story. Let's take a look at how this movie presents us clues, just as they would in a good mystery. Carson. Bill Carson. That's what he calls himself now. An armed unit escorting a cash box of gold coins meets a Yankee ambush, and only three of them are saved. Stevens, Baker, and Jackson. All I know is Carson re-enlisted. The poor guy's minus an eye. The cavalry. General Sibley. He left us out Carson has a patch over one eye. He's with the third. They've already left. For Glorietta. Canby's front line is right on their heels, and the desert lies ahead of them. Canby's men are coming here. But no one will set foot in this hell. So when this happens, the audience knows the significance of this discovery, although Tuco does not. And I'm Lincoln's grandfather. Not surprisingly, this is the big midpoint of the story, a crucial turning point that drives the second half of the movie to culminate in the big showdown. So the lesson here, involve your audience in the telling of your story, and they will love you for it. So what are your thoughts? Is the good, the bad, and the ugly the greatest western of all time? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I want to thank my wonderful patrons for supporting the channel. Your generosity makes it possible for me to keep creating content for you. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. More great content is on the way. Thank you so much for watching.